Spearfishing for me is a way of life. It's gone past just a hobby. The long-term barrier is how dangerous of the sport it is. And I love sharks in the water, and I've been nearly bitten a number of times myself. The fish I catch, everything is eaten. Beautiful raw fish. Lovely raw. It's perfect for the cook. You take some of these cutlets and just put them straight on the fry pan. This is uh, Australian bush camping, bush cooking. We're just gonna start with this medallion. Spanish mackerel, sashimi. My name is Tim McDonald. I'm from Brisbane, Australia. I am a spear fisherman. Spear fishing in Australia is breath hole diving, physically hunting fish underwater, capturing fish to take home and eat. This is big as hell, right? Have, I'm not sure how many Australian records, a number of Australian records. We're not allowed to use scuba. We're not allowed to use anything to help us go under the water. Uh, it has to be just sheer by the, the power of taking the breath in. Often when I'm diving, it's two minutes breath hold. I have free dove and shot fish over 50 meters of water. I think my deepest dive in American understanding is 186 feet. If you want to target some of the fish we target, you got to travel long distances. Pack the boat. We're full of fuel and full of eskies. And swags to sleep the night. We're going to spend three nights out on the boat, which is going to be really cool. Uh, this is Josh Ball come to join me. This trip, my goal is to shoot a, a large Spanish mackerel. They're just a beautiful fish in the water. They look amazing. And sometimes you can see them in schools of hundreds and hundreds. They get really big. And even when they're big, they're still great to eat. Heading out of Brizzy and heading north, we'll probably travel about six, seven hours tonight. It seems to be a time of year that you get a lot of big Spanish mackerel out there. So that's what we're doing, we're heading up to find them. And we drive hundreds and hundreds of kilometers in a car, hundreds of kilometers in a boat. It's not just the beautiful flavor of a Spanish mackerel that just tastes wonderful, raw or cooked, but it's the success of going and hunting that fish. One of the great challenges of spearfishing is have a clear enough water to dive. We just pulled up at our first spot and you could not see your hand under the water. Yeah, that's no good, that's no fun. So we've got another 40k run to the next spot. Hopefully it's a fair bit better visibility than that. It's a dangerous sport. I've lost three friends uh, to shallow water blackout while spearfishing. I've saved a number of my friends from shallow water blackout. I had to drag them back to the surface, that's happened probably for me 15, 20 times. I had a number of my friends bitten to shark attacks and I've been nearly bitten a number of times myself. So I've had a number of bull sharks drive me through the water. It's eyeballs like right here looking at me. Last year, I ran into probably five and a half meter great white. Yeah. Well done. My day job is actually a pastor. I'm a, I'm a minister at, at a local church. This hobby, this way of life, is what I try and squeeze around all of that. I arrived at our first spot for big mackerel. Josh is already in the water. We're gonna hopefully find some mackerel, we'll do a couple of drifts here and see what we can find. Free diving is probably the closest thing you can get to flying. You're gliding through the water. Now that feeling is an awesome feeling. The only challenge with that feeling is as you're gliding down through the water, you're also getting crushed. You're getting crushed by the ocean, you're crushed by pressure. I can see that surface is a long way away, but I'm also relaxed. Literally working your body to its fullest capacity to do that. Oh, Josh just found a big mackerel. Head. Hey? Big head. This is a vlog of me. How big is he? Oh yeah, it's big. Freaking monster. Pound wise, that's a probably 70 pound fish. Big Spaniard. <laughs> big mackerel. Good job, mate. Great fish. From there, he sits in the boat for the next hour. Well, I just do drift after drift. I don't see any more mackerel for the, for the rest of the time there. But we're tempted just to dive another spot and another spot and another spot until it's like, ah, it's too dark already before we even start driving. It was getting a bit rough and we just pulled in behind a sheltered headland and we decided we're gonna sleep there the night. 
spent the night sleeping on the boat, which was good until it started raining and we got drenched. This is, this is our hotel for the evening. Morning, Paulo. Morning. Spectacular view. And we've got a flat battery. Can't start the boat. No. So we've had to call a mate to bring us a battery, but uh, it's taken out pretty much the morning. So living the dream. Welcome to Spearfish. <laughs> Stupid battery. Oh, oh shit. Who needs it? Who needs it? The day was wasted, the, the, the right tide was gone. So we just had to fill it in by hunting some, some really nice eating fish. So we shot some finger mark and fish that are really good to eat. There's only about 500,000 of those, eh? Biggest finger mark school I've ever seen. And made sure we got back to the campsite in time to get set up before dark. And that is one of the key parts of these whole trips. The, Got a fire going, we're cooking food, we're talking, we're laughing. We made it to where we're camping for the night on this beautiful beach. This is Aussie style camping, it's what we call a swag. Uh, it's it's a material zips up and forms into a little tent. This is the boy slept last night. Morning, Bola. Morning. What a beautiful part of the world. Turn is it you're gonna get the boat? I know it's our last day. It's my best chance to get in the water, best chance to see a mackerel. I know the spot that I want to dive. I, it's no use diving today because it's it's the wrong tide. We've missed it completely. And then I go to another spot that I've just heard people talk about. We get there and I jump in. If you're gonna dive those deeper depths, it becomes a total mental thing. On the way down, most of the time, all you're doing is you're telling yourself, relax, relax. You're trying to learn how to hold my breath, how to hunt, how to relax while you're doing it. You jump out too quick, fish are gone. You've been planning it for three months and you just blew the opportunity. I dive down to the bottom and I'm looking around and there's giant herring coming past me and they all scatter. Oh, I'm like, I wonder what's made them scatter. As I look back over my shoulder and I just see a big mackerel, the first thing I think in my head is, don't blow this, and this is your moment. And so I pull my gun underneath me, bang. When I wrap my arms around, I'm like, that's a big fish. That's a, that's a fat winter mackerel. Yeah, stone are dead. Uh, that fish went 23 and a half kilos, which just under 60 pounds. Three days out, right at the end of the day, I dive a spot where I've seen mackerel before. Oh, got a beastie just to finish the day. And it's a nice, really nice fish. From there, I just like, that's in the boat. We're gonna go pull up on the island where we've been camping, all that camping gear is. Let's cook, let's eat, fresh as it comes. Back at camp and it's lunchtime. And we're gonna uh, cook up some of this Spanish mackerel. Now, uh, let me just quickly knock off these cutlets and show you how we do this. So this tail section here is, is really thick and Beautiful, beautiful white meat in here. I'm gonna make them nice and thin because we're cooking on the campfire. This mackerel is gonna taste so good. There's a smoky flavor to it as well. Cutlets are almost ready. This is gonna be real yum. That skin is really crispy and really good. It's genuinely really nice. I don't know if it's the fact that we've been sleeping on the boat for three days or what, but that tastes so good. <laughs> you can see the glistening oils in the sashimi. It just looks so beautiful and so fresh. You smell it. It doesn't smell fishy. If it, it's, there's none of that. It's just this fresh, beautiful smell. We've got some chili flakes as well. I like chili flakes in my soy sauce. Sashimi with some sushi mayo in the middle of it. And uh, this is going to be our lunch. Oh, that's fresh. Ready for the next meal. That's how we do it with a good camera. Super easy. Enjoy it. Of course, this is a good meal like this. Do I think Australia is the best country in the world? 
I do. Some places in Australia have an incredibly untouched beauty. Some of the places that we go and spearfish genuinely have never been spearfished before. Keep it exactly how we found it. And we'll be back again. Beautiful secluded beach. I had to rush back to Brisbane, did a little side detour on the way and stopped at one of our barramundi spots and both of us shot a barramundi. Well, there's three days done. Big adventure, we covered about 450 kilometres in the last three days. And uh, I'm ready to sleep in my own bed tonight because it's going to be an exhausting six or seven hour run home as well. What a cool trip. 